Today's lesson is called Topic Writing, writing about hypothetical situations. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff. Hi, I'm Hanny. Hmm. Hypothetical situations.、Hmm. It sounds like we're going to be using the word "if" a lot, and then also the words "would" and "could," because today we're going to be talking about, or writing about, I should say, hypothetical situations. Okay, we're going to be imagining things that might be impossible. 好，我们今天的写作主题呢是关于假设法的写作技巧。那我们看到这个字 hypothetical， 它是形容假设性的。那同学们有没有曾经希望过去某件事不要发生，或者是希望可以改变某个现况呢？像这种假如怎么样怎么样的假设性问题是很常见的作文题目。我们今天就是要练习用 if I could be any animal, I would be 什么什么来写写看。如果我们能变成另外一种动物，会是什么模样呢？好，那希望同学们听完今天。课程可以学到一些假设性文章的写作技巧，可以顺利写出有趣又充满想象力的文章。Okay, guys. Before we get started, like I said before, today we are going to be using the word if. Okay, that's for sure. And we're also going to be using the conditionals would and could. Now, pay attention. To the usage of these words, it's kind of important. Okay, especially when you're talking about hypothetical situations where you're imagining things that might be totally, totally fictional or maybe even impossible. Now, one side note: I said, yeah, we're going to be using the word "if" a whole lot today. Well, get this: I used to study logic. Okay, when I was an undergrad, I studied logic quite a bit. A hypothetical statement. Informal logic is actually an if-then statement. So even in logic, when you talk about hypotheticals, that word "if" is going to show up. If A, then B. Anyways, that's it for my tangent today. This is the hypothetical situation that we're going to be discussing. We're going to talk about becoming a different animal. Now, can we actually become an animal? No. No, we can't actually do that. This is a hypothetical. Situation. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, when we are thinking about being an animal, we're trying to imagine what it would be like to be an animal. Further, we're trying to figure out what animals we would like to be. Now, try to be imaginative when you're doing this, folks. Okay, don't sit there and look over and see your dog there and think I want to be a dog just because <laughs> you saw your dog there. Okay, that's not imaginative. At all now, being a cat—that's slightly better. But make sure you only pick cat if you really, really love your cat and you would really, really want to be a cat. I'm not a cat person, so I don't understand that. But if you really do love cats, you can pick cat. And apparently, we are actually going to be talking about becoming a cat today, hypothetically speaking. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. First, though, I want to ask Hanny if you could be any animal. Which animal would you become? Um, a snow leopard. A snow leopard, because <laughs>、yeah. you want to live up in the Himalayan mountains and you want people to totally leave you alone. I want to walk gracefully. And they, in the snow. they do walk gracefully. <laughs> By the way, snow leopards do exist, but for many, many years they were only rumored to exist. No one actually had evidence of their existence. And I heard a story about there was this crew from National Geographic magazine or some magazine or something like that. They finally, they they're up in the Himalayas and the mountains there for months or something like that, a really super long period of time. And finally, a photographer was able to take a picture of a snow leopard, the first in existence. Apparently, the guy took the picture. He didn't mess it up, and then he immediately broke down and cried. He wept. Getting that picture made a grown man weep. Anyways, good answer. If I could be any animal, I would be a snow leopard. Me, I was gonna pick pelican because you can fly and you also have a really cool mouth, so you can catch fish like、uh-huh. with your mouth in the ocean. So that's pretty cool. But snow leopard is pretty good too. Thank you. 
好，那我们现在这个开头，我们要练习写说，呃，如果你有可能变成另外一种动物，你会想要成为哪一种？那为什么呢？好，当我们在撰写运用假设法的文章的时候，最重要的是要去注意事实跟假设之间它的时态转换。好，那现在呢，因为我们是人，不是动物，你也不可能突然一秒之间就变别的动物，所以我们要写出跟现在事实相反的假设情况。那这样的句型会是用到 if 加上主词，加上过去式动词，或者是 w。were， 然后后面的主要子句用主词加上 could、would、should、might 等等，再加上原形动词。要特别注意 if 的子句时态，它是用过去简单式。那如果你的动词是 be 动词，不管你的主词是谁，就一律用 were。那如果是要用到助动词，则是用过去式助动词。好，再来主要子句的部分，则是用过去式助动词来搭配原形动词。好，那么来看一下开头，它的第一个句子要写说，如果我能选择的话，我会选择成为另一种动物，而那种动物是家猫。那除了这样的句型，你也可以用 If I could choose to be another animal, I would 怎么样怎么样。同学们，你可以用用自己的想象力去想想看，你到底想要成为哪一种动物。All right, I like how you use the word were there. Very often, even native speakers, when they're speaking hypothetically, they'll say something like, "If I was dot dot dot." That's technically incorrect, as far as the grammar is concerned. You would say, "If I were." Anyways, okay, let's go ahead and start things off. Let's start at the first paragraph. Remember, essays have to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay. Now, usually, when you're writing a persuasive essay, the gold standard is the five-paragraph essay. Okay, you've got the first paragraph that introduces things, followed by three paragraphs called the body, where you're persuading someone, or you are providing pieces of evidence, so on and so forth. And then you have the concluding paragraph, where you restate what you have said in the introduction. But at that point, you kind of have you've persuaded your reader, or you've come to understand something more deeply. Let's say something like that. Anyways, yes. What is characteristic of most introductory paragraphs is the thesis statement, which is usually the final sentence in that first paragraph. Now, here we've simplified things, though. We're gonna have three paragraphs. We're gonna have an opening, okay, kind of a body paragraph, and then a summarizing or concluding paragraph. Let's start with paragraph number one. It's the opening. Okay, so go ahead and think about it. Okay, let's say you want to become another animal. What animal would you become if you could choose? If you could choose to become some animal, what would you become? Apparently, this person wants to become a house cat. Okay, a domestic cat or a house cat. So you'd say something like, "If I could choose, dot dot dot," or If I were given the choice, dot dot dot. Now there's a blank for you guys, and because we're nice people here, you can also okay choose an alternative. Let's say you want to be something else. Okay, you can think about that now as well. So there are two blanks for you guys to fill in. Get to work. 好，那我们这个开头这两个句子，他一开始说，如果我能选择的话 ，if I were given the choice。那我们刚刚提到喽，你要用假设法的话，在这边它因为它是跟现在事实相反，那主词虽然是 I， 可是你的动词还是要用 were 来表达。那么后面它是 I would choose 怎么样怎么样，这边就是用过去式助动词来搭配原形动词。那第二种句型，你可以用 if I could choose to be 什么什么。那这里的 if 子句里面，它就是用过去式助动词。那么后面的主要子句，你还是用过去式助动词哦，变成 I would be 什么什么，像是 I would be a bird, I would be a snow leopard 等等的。那我们就请 Jeff 老师帮我们念完整的句子。You could say something like, if I were given the choice, I would choose to be another type of animal, and that animal is the house cat. Now let's say you couldn't pick house cat. Let's say you were given an option. Hypothetically, you could say, "If I could choose to be another animal, I would be a bird," which is a pretty good pick, I think. I said pelican during the introduction. A pelican is a bird. Birds are great, anyways. That's it for paragraph number one. Let's move on to the body. Okay, the second paragraph. Okay, this is where you explain why you explain why you want to be a house cat. Now, if you wanted to pick something else, snow leopard, pelican, whatever, go for it. But in this paragraph, this is why you explain you want to be. 
the animal of your dreams, whatever that animal happens to be. Anyways, let's go ahead and start constructing some sentences, okay? You could say, hmm, why do I want to be a house cat? Well, as a house cat, blank, and then you could tell people why you want to be a house cat, what you could be, or what you could do while being a house cat, I should say. Okay, further, let's go ahead and also you know, pick up the alternative line as well. Remember, not everyone wants to be a house cat. There are those other folks out there who want to be a bird. Okay, so as a house cat and then hypothetically or your hypothetical option as a bird, what would you do or what could you do? 好，我们再来看第二段是要写本文，是我们的重点喽。你要去说明为什么你想要成为这种动物，为什么你想要当家猫呢？好，那这边他就要写说 ，as a house cat， 作为家猫。然后作者要表达说，我可以白天睡觉，晚上玩，没有人会觉得我这样不好。的确，就不会有妈妈碎碎念或什么的。好，那同学们要注意这边时态的问题，你要表达说我可以怎么样怎么样，你不能写说 I can 什么什么，这里一样需要用 I could 来表达，用过去式。助动词，好，那么再来，我们还可以用另外一种例子，像是如果你是要当一只鸟，那你可以写说，像是可以翱翔天际啊，你可以享受从上空俯瞰景色之类，你可以写写看。那如果你想要写鸟，然后要翱翔天际，你可以用 soar 这个动词 ，soar 它有升腾、翱翔或是高飞，不是那个米奇高飞，是飞上去的高飞。好，那我们就请 Jeff 老师帮我们念两个完整的句子。OK， Option A， House Cat。As a house cat, I could sleep all day and play all night, and no one would think badly of me for it. So you'd kind of be like Garfield, apparently. <laughs> as far as the bird is concerned, option B. As a bird, I could soar into the sky and enjoy the view of the city or country from above. Now I've got to say, option B. You have captured my imagination. Soaring high into the sky—that sounds good to me. House cat though, being lazy all day and then kind of running around and being crazy at night. It's either you're lazy or you're crazy. I can't decide quite yet. So let's go ahead and take this opportunity to move on to paragraph number three, folks. This is where you wrap things up. But remember, just don't say, "Yeah, I want to be a house cat." The end. Or for these reasons, I would like to be a house cat. No, no, no. You gotta add some imagination to it. Maybe. A joke or something like that. Anyways, your third paragraph is your concluding paragraph. You summarize things and you put a bow on your piece of writing because you are wrapping up your essay. Anyways, two sentences for you guys. First of all, let's think of a joke. Okay. So far, the house cat angle for me it really hasn't captured my imagination. But A joke is a good way to end a piece of writing like this, especially an imaginative one. You could say something like, "People think house cats are without gratitude. People think house cats are cold and cold-blooded, but that's not true. Sometimes, I would do something. I might catch something and then give it to my human." To show my appreciation, but feel free to fill that in however you like. Now, as far as the bird is concerned, though, guys, let your imaginations roam free. There's a blank page in front of you. It's up to you to fill that with beautiful, beautiful imagery. As far as birds are concerned. 好，那我们第三部分就要做总结喽。你要去从你想成为动物的角度来做总结，想说如果你变成猫，你会想要说什么？要想表达自己的心声。这样，那这边他这边有两句话说，人们会认为家猫不懂得感激，那才不是这样。他说，猫呢偶尔会抓东西给它的人类来表达感激。好，那这边有一个字 gratitude， 它是指感恩或是感谢、感激。那么还有一个 appreciation， 它也是指感谢的意思。那 appreciation 它还有欣赏、赏识的意思。好，那如果你要从鸟的角度来写，你可以可能可以写说，人们可能会觉得鸟不够聪明啊。但是其实鸟他们会去使用工具，会去解决困难的问题。你可以从这个方向去想想看，或是你可以再举别的动物例子，然后去想你自己要讲的话。好，那这边我们补充一个句型，你可以用主词加上 be known to 加上原形动词来表达说。大家都知道某事物、某人会做什么事，或者是以做某事出名。好，那现在我们已经学会这个句型，那我们现在请 Jeff 老师来翻译这两个句子。People think house cats are without gratitude, but that's not true. 
Sometimes I would catch something and give it to my <laughs> to my human to show my appreciation. Pretty good there, Garfield. Anyways, sentence B. Let's talk about birds. People think birds lack intelligence. You could write, but that's not true. They have been known to use tools and solve difficult problems. <laughs> All right, folks, the time has come to actually read our sample piece of writing. Remember, folks, we are writing, excuse me, we are going to be reading about a piece of writing, I should say. And remember, this is a hypothetical situation that we are dealing with. So let's go ahead and throw the word if into the title of our piece of sample writing. Let's say something like, if I could be any animal, I would be... Good title. I like it. Anyways, let's get started. Humans may be the smartest creatures on Earth. Our piece of writing begins, but being human isn't always all it's cracked up to be. Hmm. Something isn't all it's cracked up to be. That's kind of a weird idiomatic phrase. Don't try to translate that word for word. You won't get anywhere. I promise you that. Anyways, this phrase is used in good situations. Good situations where there are drawbacks, okay? So, being rich is a good thing for the most part, okay? Most people are not going to take pity on a really rich person. Oh, that poor guy, he has too much money. <laughs> ah. But the rich person could say, wait a minute. Being rich isn't all it's cracked up to be. Most of my friends, they're not actually my friends, they only like me because of my money. Oh, now I'm starting to feel bad. So in that situation, and in any situation like this, you could use this phrase. Something isn't all it's cracked up to be. Okay, it's used in a positive situation where there are still drawbacks. Okay, being famous. Another good example, being famous is a good thing. But being famous for some people isn't all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, I love being famous, but I no longer have privacy. So... Fame. It's not all it's cracked up to be. Anyways, let's move on here. Next it says, let's face it, we spend the bulk of our lives working, making money, and feeling distressed about the future. Okay, now we've got another phrase here at the beginning of the sentence. Let's face it is the phrase. Now, if you face something, that means you look at something objectively. You see it for what it is. You no longer delude yourself. You see that thing clearly. So here, let's face it. Okay, let's take a look at this issue for what it is. Let's look at it clearly. Okay, then we also have the two vocabulary words, bulk and distressed. Okay, it says here that we spend, we as humans spend the bulk of our lives working. Here, when we're talking about bulk, we're not talking about like big muscles, okay? Like the rock has big bulky muscles and stuff <laughs> like that. That's not what we're talking about here. If we're talking about the bulk of something, we're talking about the greater part of that thing. You could have also said we spend most of our lives working. We spend most of our lives working or the bulk of our lives working. Further, we also have the word distressed. If you feel distressed, you feel anxious or very worried or nervous about something. 好，我们来看这个第一段的前半部哈。这边有一个 not all it's cracked up to be， 它意思是说没有像人家说的那么好，没有像人家号称的那么好。当我们说 something is all 或者是 everything 或者是 what it's cracked up to be， 是说某事物像大家所说的那么好，名副其实。可是常常是用否定的用法写作 not all it's cracked up to be。就像刚刚 Jeff 老师说有名啊，或是有钱，你可能以为这样很好，可是其实还是有很多缺点的。那下一句的 Let's face it， 就有点像我们来面对现实吧。好，再看到两个单字，第一个是 bulk， bulk 在这边它是指大部分或是大量，也可以用来指巨大的东西。我们可以。用 buy something in bulk 来指大量采买某个东西。那么第二个单词 distress， 它是形容词，形容忧虑的或是烦乱的。那它的动词我们顺便学一下，就是去掉 ed 变成 distress， 那就表示使什么苦恼，使什么忧虑。它也可以当名词来表达苦恼或者是悲痛。Okay, moving on. Let's wrap up the first paragraph. The next two sentences say we even suffer from body image issues, a problem unknown to other animals. Therefore, if I were given the choice, I would choose to be another type of animal, and that animal 
is the house cat. So there you have it. This person wants to be a house cat. They have come out and they have said it. They have declared it. Anyways, before we move on, let's talk about body image. Okay, body image is how you see yourself. And yes, very often people, especially in the West, have body image issues. Okay, when people have body image issues, they look at themselves, but they don't see themselves. Clearly, very often people think they need to be skinnier. So even if they are at the right weight, let's say they want to be thinner. So they see themselves as being fat when they're not fat at all. They're not seeing themselves properly. They're having body image issues. 好，我们来看这边有一个 body image， 它是指身体的意向、形象。那这边说的 body image issues， 那就表示说，呃，就是有一些人他会觉得自己明明就很瘦，可是他还想要更瘦。也就是一个人他对他自己身体的特征啊、外貌的认知，可能太在意自己外观，觉得可能鼻子不够挺啊，手指像甜不辣，小腿太粗什么什么的。好，那我们再继续读到下一段。Okay, let's go ahead and read the entire second paragraph right now. Okay, because We're kind of running out of time. As a house cat, I could sleep all day and play all night, and no one would think badly of me for it. We've seen that sentence before. Now, if hunger beset me, the piece of writing continues, there would be no need to lift a paw for food, as it would magically appear in my bowl. No effort would need to be made to look cute either, since I would be born adorable, at least in the eyes of my human. I could even become famous if my human uploaded videos of me to YouTube.、Hmm, this person is stating, or making, I should say, making quite the case. I kind of want to be a house cat too. Anyways, before we move on, let's talk about the word "beset." If hunger beset me, who is this? Charles Dickens. <laughs> This is the type of word that you might see used very formally, or you might see it used in English literature that's kind of old, from a couple of hundred years ago, or something like that. If hunger beset me, okay, that's a fancy way of saying if I got hungry. If I got hungry suddenly, that's pretty much all that we're saying there. And we also have the word adorable. If something is adorable, it's super cute. You want to pick it up. And you want to hug it. You want to cuddle that thing immediately. That's what being adorable is all about. Cute, easily lovable. How can I o? Then we also have the word upload. Upload is the opposite of the word download. So you download something from the internet. You take something from the internet and you copy it onto your computer. Uploading is the opposite of that. You've got the copy of that thing on your computer, let's say, and then you move it, or you move a copy of it, I should say, onto the internet so that other people can see it and download it, so on and so forth. 好，我们来看第二段。这整段都是在假设说，如果我是家猫的情况。所以同学们有没有看到每一句它都不是用现在式？好，那这段写的蛮有趣的。猫咪饿了，它都不用举起猫爪出去觅食，食物就会神奇的出现在碗里。因为有一种生物叫做猫奴，它会来侍奉你。你不需要努力，可能就会变网红了。好，那我们来看一下，这边有一个字是 beset。beset 那个 Jeff 老师说这是蛮正式的用字哈，或者是会在文学作品里面出现。它是当动词表示困。困扰或是使什么苦恼？那它的动词三态同形。那我们看到文中他说 ，If hunger beset me， 这边的 beset 就是过去式。好，那么再来看 adorable， 它是形容可爱的。至于 upload，upload upload 表示上传，相反就是 download 表示下载。Okay， let's wrap things up. People sometimes think house cats are without gratitude， but that's simply not true. Now and then. I would catch an insect or mouse and give it to my human. It would be my way of thanking them for a lifetime of love, service, and protection. That being said, cats don't really need people to protect them. I should say they've got fangs and claws, and they can fight. And they're bad. They've got bad temper sometimes. Anyways, I digress. Before we wrap things up, let's talk about this phrase: now and then. Now and then means sometimes. But not always. Every once in a while, this person, as a cat, would catch an insect or a mouse and give it to their human. How cute! 好，那这段有一个片语是 now and then， 你也可以说 every now and then， 它就表示有时或是偶尔。那它的意思就跟 from time to time, once in a while, at times. Occasionally, 这些都差不多。那你也可以写作 now and again， 或者是 every now and again. There you have it. Okay, folks. With that, this month's topic writing lesson is now complete. 
That's right, guys. You don't have to write about hypothetical situations anymore for today. So with that, it's time for us to say bye-bye. Bye-bye.